Linda heard me laughing for about 15 minutes the other day when I was watching that. Um, so it's really funny. I really love it when uh, Christian comedians can take a really serious topic and make a really funny, you know, funny video out of it, um, but really teach a serious lessons out of it. So um, I, I really love it. And here's the serious stuff. The serious stuff. Um, so last week, um, if you remember, I spoke about the fact that we have an enemy. We have, and I said very clearly that we have only one enemy, and uh, and that he's after us. And then after the meeting. Very good friend of mine, Mark Westinghouse, came up to me. Mar Darlene is sick um, today, so she got sick last night, so they're not here. Um, but he came up to me really, really nicely in a very polite way, like a good brother would, and he said, um, you know, you're wrong. We have two enemies. And I'm like, we do? I said, well, you know, what do you mean? He goes, well, the Bible says, and, he was, and it's, he's very, very right, the Bible says that the flesh wages war against the spirit. So we have an enemy that pursues us, but the enemy, his best tactic is to use our own flesh, our own bad desires to lure us or tempt us um, to fall away from God. And it, the Bible is very, very clear about it. And so I said, wow, you know what? It's really right because in 1 Peter chapter 2, Peter writes that the fleshly lust literally wages war against the spirit. It wages war against the spirit. And in, and in Galatians it says the flesh is against the spirit. They're in opposition to each other. And it's really, it, it just goes on with more and more, if you read Romans 8, the whole chapter is all about either you're going to pursue the flesh or you're going to pursue the spirit. What do you want? You can't do both. You cannot please God if you are pleasing your flesh. And people in the spirit, Romans 8 goes on to say, in the spirit people are putting to death the deeds of the flesh. And then Paul goes even further in Corinthians. He says, I buffet my body and I make my body my slave. Now, some of us read buffet our body. <laughs> um, but no, it means buffet. It means actually, you know, go against it to make it your slave. And it's really our flesh that gives in to the enemy. So then the question came, comes to me, whenever I come across stuff like this, well, why would God make us that way then? Why would he give us a problem that would go be in opposition to him himself? Why? Why would he do that? And there's actually some real physical reasons for that, is that years ago, and you know, you young people need to listen to this, years ago we didn't we used to have a tool for everything. You know, there was no blowers for leaves. You actually had to use a rake if you want to get rid of your leaves. Now you buy a blower you spend money on the blower and you spend money on the gasoline for the blower and then you spend money to go to the gym because you're not getting enough exercise. Uh, so anyway, years ago, we had to, everything required a lot of work. And so God created in our bodies a need, a desire to eat so that we wouldn't waste away. He, all these things that you can think about in your body, we, he created a desire for us to get some rest, otherwise we'd work to death. Desire to eat, a desire to multiply, that's why we're here. Because we have a desire to multiply. You can call it whatever you want to call it. We have a desire to sleep. We have all these things that God put within us so that we would prosper and multiply and do well. And it worked. Look at us. Look at this world. Getting more, more people all the time. We're doing great. But that's the things he put in us because we need it. But there's a spiritual side to it too. There's a spiritual side that he put the flesh in us. I don't know if anybody could ever actually guess what that is, but I'm going to tell you straight out, very, very simply, if this thing doesn't fall off my head in the meantime. God, the Bible says, it's one of the most clearest statements that the Bible says in three words. God is love. Very clear. doesn't go on and try to make it complicated or anything like that. It just says, God is is love. And in order for love to exist, you have to be able to make choices that are hard choices to make. You have to be able to do things that, that's sacrificial for yourself. So in order for me to love my wife, I have to take out her garbage. <laughs> it's a very difficult choice because she has a lot of it. I don't know why. I love picking on you, sweetheart. Um, 
I think I drove Diane Masasi crazy at the uh, festival yesterday. I won't even tell you what I, what I, how I teased her. But anyway, um, <laughs> no, I, I, no, I can't repeat that one. That wouldn't be good. So anyway, um, because God is love, he gave us the ability to make choices in order to sacrifice ourselves to show love, which also means that you can also make a bad choice. And that's, that's why people, I, you know, I've said this before, I, I, but, you know, the Bible says that God hates sin. Then why does he allow it? Because if there wasn't for the choice of sin, you wouldn't have a choice for love. And I'll never forget going to, um, going to my chiropractor like two days after the Twin Towers thing, September 13th. Two days after September 11th. I went to the chiropractor on September 13th. And she, like everybody, was stunned. She was in shock. But she just blurted out to me, she goes, if God is real, why would he allow? Why would he allow something like that to happen? And of course, at that particular moment, it's, it was really a difficult time to be able to share this principle. But the fact of the matter is that God allows sin so that we have a choice for love because God is love and if he took away that choice from us we would be nothing more than a bunch of robots we would be nothing more than a bunch of robots but there is a war going on and we have to choose between one or the other which way are we going to go the choices that God gives us is our choice and that's what creates love and I did share with her later on, and she was like, her mouth like dropped open, and she just like, wow, I just never, I never knew that. But I want to share one, one other thing about all of this stuff, because what brought this on to me was what's been going on in our country um, lately, in Charlottesville, places like that. Nobody wakes up one morning and suddenly says to themselves, I think I'm going to drive my car into a bunch of people today. Nobody does that. These evil things happen one step after one step after one bad step at a time. And it's everyday choices that we make. Nobody gets up and, and, just, and becomes evil all of a sudden. We have choices to make every day. And every day if you give in to a bad choice, an action that God that you know that God wouldn't appreciate, you give in to another step closer to actually completely falling away and being the person that drives your car into other people. It usually starts with something dramatic that happens in your life. It usually starts with something dramatic. You, you have a loss or you, or you get really dramatically hurt. That's what I, I love, the book that Linda wrote, it's called Heart School, where she gets back into your, into your life and, and digs around and tries to find where, where was it that you got hurt? What happened to you that hurt you so dramatically? And then how to, get, how to deal with that and how to forgive and, and how to let love back in and, and how to have that thing not become that, that stumbling block in your life anymore. And it's, it's really great. But people usually get hurt or they have a great loss and then they start making bad decisions. And then the flesh... It's like that centrific centrifugal force that the farther we go out with it, the farther harder it pulls on us. The farther we go with it, the harder it pulls on us. The farther we follow the flesh, the greater the pull. This video that we watched, this kid, it, it made it look so simple that this kid just said, okay, I confess, and then they tie the gorilla up and they ship it away. It's like it's over. His, his process is just beginning, but he made a step in the right direction but he made a step in the right direction. We all have problems. We all have weaknesses, but we have to choose. I'm going to start doing something about it today. Today's the day. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to take this to the cross. And we use that term in, in Christianity, like taking the cross. What does that mean? The cross to me is like the most amazing thing that ever happened because he had nails. Can you imagine? Driven through him hanging from the cross, and then praise. Lord, forgive them, 
They don't know what they're doing. That's an amazing thing. That's why we need him so much. We need his love. Love does not brag. It's not arrogant. That's one of the things I'm seeing about these groups is that they're arrogant. They think they're better than other people. God, God's love is not arrogant and does not brag. It, love treats others the way you'd have them treat you. That's what the Bible says. Do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. We denounce, Family of Hope Church, we denounce any group, any organization that would elevate itself above any other group or any other people. We do, we do that. But we promote love. But we say those really big things, and then that jerk pulls out in front of me. And nothing, love is not found anywhere near <laughs> in my heart. But that's where it starts, right there. I can make a choice to get angry, to think that I'm better than that person, or I can make a choice. Look, everybody can make a mistake. I'm sure, you know, that's what, that's what we do it. Had, um, I think I can use the word jerk. So I had this jerk guy down at the bow club. <laughs> J-E-R-K, jerk, yeah. And um, so he's, um, boy, I hope nobody knows this guy. Uh, he, he, um, he's in charge of the gas pump at the boat club. And uh, we, they decided last year that they were going to modernize the computer system that runs a gas pump. So that means that we, can, we pump gas for our boats, but then we pay for it using this computer. The computer literally is running on DOS. Do you know what DOS is? Okay, not, there's no windows on it. There's nothing, it's literally run on DOS. And the IBMer who rewrote the program this year, I said to him, why are you doing that? Why don't you just, you know, he goes, because I like antique software. So I said, great. So now we all have to use antique software because you like it. So anyway, so they, but he rewrote the program. And um, you go in there, you choose your name, put your password in, and then it's, and then it's just two big things stand in front of you. It says start pump, stop pump. Okay, so that's how you do it. So this older guy was there, and he couldn't, he couldn't remember his password or anything, so I said, I'll, I'll let you pump it under my name. And then I put his money in an envelope. Then, then I pumped for myself, and then I walked away. And then two weeks later, this guy come up to me, has this big slip of paper in his hand, and he goes, hey, two weeks ago, you pumped $1,600 worth of gasoline. I went... I don't even know where to put $1,600 worth of gasoline. I mean, I could fill up everybody's car in this room for, the, for that kind of money. I, mean, I said, you know, you know you're crazy, right? You know? And he walked away. I said, what, what do you mean? What, where are you going? Why are you walking away from me? You know? And he probably could tell that I was like a little excited. <laughs> and so I said to him, look, I pumped $60 for that guy, and I pumped $140 for myself, $200 worth. I have no idea where this other fourteen hundred dollars worth of gas came from. He goes, "Well, you're, you obviously are very bad with numbers." And then he walked out of the room. And um, I went home, and Linda took one look at my face, and she said, "What is the matter with you?" And I just, oh, and it took like two days to get over this, this bump. And all that God said when I finally could come to my senses was treat him the way you want to be treated. Don't go back and put it on him. Don't go back and tell him that he's a jerk. You can tell the whole church he's a jerk. But, <laughs> but don't go back and tell him and you'd be nice to him. And those are the choices that we have to make every day. Or else it's one step after another step after another step. We need to be praying for these people. We need to be praying. What happens when you skip a day? I'm, gonna, I'm just going to really go for it today and just going to be bad today. It happens sometimes, right? You can start over anytime you want. But every time you start over, you're starting over. You have to understand that. Every time you start over, you are starting over. I had some really, really bad pains in the bottom of my feet years ago 
And um, I'm trying to play basketball in this terrible burning pain. And uh, what happened was that, that I was trying to dig a hole in frozen ground and I was literally taking my feet with sneakers on and I was literally pounding the spade into the ground. And I didn't know that I damaged all the tendons in the bottom of my feet. And I, went, I took this pain for about a year. And I finally just said, I, it's not going away, so I gotta see a doctor. So doctor said, told me what I did. He goes, you need to not use those tendons for six weeks. He said, and if you decide you're going to use them and not wait six weeks, then they're going to be damaged again and you will start over and you will give it another six weeks. So in other words, this is how long it's going to take. And if you don't do it, you're starting over. I'm saying all this to you, making the point way too long, is that don't wait any longer. Or even if you've, already, if you've tried once before and you stopped, start today. And start living the life that's against the flesh, putting to death the deeds of the flesh, the things that you want to do that you know you shouldn't be doing. And start loving other people. Start today. And if you need prayer for it, we want to pray for you. We want to pray for you. We all have problems and weaknesses. But that's what makes love the choice that we choose to follow him. Amen.